Hey guys, this is the Cactus 2 Clouds hike. This is one of the hardest hikes around. I think Backpacker Magazine voted it top five, maybe. Hardest hike. I actually don't recommend you do this hike unless you have a specific reason why you'd want to. Um, if you want to hike to San Jacinto, there's good options from the tram or from Idlewild that aren't as dangerous as this. Um, so throwing that out there. But if you do want to do it, you have to leave before... Um, before sunrise and you have to kind of clear the desert section before it gets really hot. People have died on this trail and uh, it's it's not something to be taken lightly. Anyway, with that out of the way, yeah, you'll start before dawn and uh, you're going to head up to the tram station in Long Valley, which is up there if you can see that light. That's my next stop here. Right now I'm on the trail and then from there it's another five miles or so to San Jacinto. Uh, tough hike but obviously awesome awesome views you know tip to the mountain all these mountains here and the trail you come up on is called the skyline trail because you can see the skyline of palm springs there's some forest fires over there so there's a lot of cloud cover but uh anyway if you're going to do this hike go to hikingguy.com and read all the info about the hike don't just rely on this video Likewise, if you want to do it from another route, just go to hikingguy.com. I have some other hikes to San Jacinto there. Um, but anyway, here it is. This is how you do it. Have fun. The hike starts at the Palm Springs Art Museum. Um, it's right downtown in Palm Springs, so you can easily stay at one of these hotels and just walk right to the trailhead. You park across the street in this parking garage, not here in the art parking lot. The parking is free when I did this. Uh, it probably will be free when you do it. Trailhead's at the far end of the parking lot, and you can see it's pretty well marked. It's also the museum trail, and the first mile or so to the picnic benches is called the museum trail. It's a day hike, so you might see some other folks out here. Probably not early in the morning, though. I shot the beginning of this in sunlight so you can get an idea of it. I'll switch over to darkness as you go. But right from the gun, you're pretty much climbing, coming out of here. A lot of private property signs as well, so respect those and don't cut any trails or go off trail. You're going to cross this little road here and then keep on going straight up. Now when you do this in the dark, um, it's going to obviously look much different. These white dots, which the local hikers have put on the, the uh, trail, are going to be your best friends with the headlamp. Um, the trail's well marked. When I read trip reports, I read there's a lot of shortcuts. I didn't have any problem with shortcuts. Uh, as long as I found white dots or some other trail markers like a line of stones, I was pretty good. But you can see there's a ton of these white dots as you go up. If you go to the website, I have a whole section on how to follow these in the dark. That should be helpful. But here you can see, just looking up, I'm seeing a bunch of them there. So, the white dots are your friends. At one point, there's a trail split. It's really well marked. I would recommend going to the left, which is a little more gradual. The right has a rock scramble that goes up there, but keep going. Again, look, there's a white dot. The volunteers here did a really good job of marking this, so uh, good on you. This is what it looks like at night. It's much different, but you can see the white dots stand out really well. So um, you're going to probably go a little bit slower because you can't see as far in front of you, but there are trail markings, white dots. Uh, and also, if you look at the ground, it's usually the most trodden trail is the correct one. But again, go to the website. I have a full section on doing this in the dark and navigating in the dark. That should be helpful. There's another white dot. You get the idea. The beginning can be a little tricky, too, because there is a little downhill stretch. But again, it's all well marked. You can have the lights of Palm Springs beneath you. And uh, the beginning part, again, can be a little tricky, but it just follow the white dots and the well-trodden path, and you should be fine. With the headlamp on, you kind of get into a groove of going white dot to white dot, and it's fine. You'll be okay. Eventually, you come to the picnic benches. The first ones will be on your left here. Uh, go to the website. I have a little map of this area that will help navigate it, help you navigate it. But anyway, you're going to kind of curve back to the left and go past this bench here on the, on the left and go straight through to the continuation of the trail. You're going to see, once you go through the picnic area, the trail also has the white dots marked again. 
so you'll know you're on the right trail when you uh, see a white dot. So right past the uh, picnic benches, there's this huge cairns, big pile of rocks, and a little sign warning hikers here. At this split, you're going to bear to the right. Uh, it helps to have a GPS device with the GPX file loaded in, just to double check yourself and make sure you're going the right way. But you can see white dots again means I'm going the right way. And shortly after this, you're going to see a painted rock for Long Valley, eight miles. Make the quick left here, and then there's another painted rock that has the warning. Um, a lot of hikers do this in the summer, get hurt, run out of water, and get in trouble. There's been deaths on this trail. There has been rescues. Uh, make sure you're prepared. Go to the website. Read all about it before you do it. Don't just use this video to prepare for the hike. Once you're past that rock, you're basically on the Skyline Trail up until Long Valley, up until, you know, the ranger station. So enjoy the views of Palm Springs and keep looking for the white dots, the well-trodden path. Here you can see there's a line of stones that helps you go. Um, you know, just take it slow and you should be fine. After Painted Rock, the first uh, landmark is the rescue box, Rescue 1. I like to leave some water here for other hikers. If you need water at this point, you're probably not in a good place, but uh, hopefully you do not leave that for the people who are not prepared. And then keep going. So just keep following the white dots, and then eventually you're going to see another light, not Palm Springs, but in the distance you'll see the light of the tram station, which is well lit at night. There it is. It's going to look like a really bright star. That's where you are going. So keep on heading up. At 4,300 feet, you come to the stone marker. It's not always there, but if it is, enjoy it. And uh, continue on through. The trail's kind of back to the right from here. Now, people leave before sunrise because you want to clear the desert before the sun goes up and it gets hot out. Um, hopefully, you're around 5,000 feet or so, or maybe higher by the time the sun rises. The sunrise, obviously, is pretty cool up here. Um, it's going to be a welcome uh, relief after hiking in the dark. Hiking in the dark, uh, some people love it. Try to do this with a full moon if you can. Uh, it does get a little monotonous, and the light will be a welcome sign as you come up. Here you can see the trail is well marked with stones. Don't take the cutoff. Uh, the volunteers have marked it well. And keep going up. Once you're up this high, you're also going to notice some white dots once again, um, but also some more vegetation. You sort of leave the area where there is... A hardcore desert and you come up into the mountains there's a little more vegetation and the trail gets a little uh, a little calmer for a while it's not so uphill they call it the never-ending ridge you also might see some little campgrounds where people who uh, came through here did an overnight another option if you want but otherwise just keep following the white dots and uh, Enjoy this little respite from the grade before you start going up again, because you will need your energy later. You can see the false trails have been blocked off. There are some splits up here. Just use your GPX file, and you should be okay. At one point, you come to the sign pointing backwards towards Palm Springs, five miles. Uh, just keep on going straight. The next landmark you're going to hit is Rescue Box 2. Again, I leave a nice water here for uh, folks who need it, but you don't have to. And just keep on going down the trail. The trail is pretty easy to follow. You're going to be climbing. You're going to start to get really awesome views at this point. Maybe just because of the sunlight, but uh, as you get higher, obviously the views are uh, more impressive. You can also start to see down to the right uh, into the canyon where the tram comes up. So you might catch a glimpse or two of the trams going up as you come through here. Uh, it's going to feel like you're so close. That ridge up ahead, you will see that the entire way, and it will feel like it's getting closer at times, and other times you'll feel like you're making absolutely no progress. Uh, just push it out of your mind and keep going. You can see the vegetation. Uh, there's a lot more vegetation up here. And eventually you get to Flat Rock, which is a dry stream bed. At Flat Rock, the trail continues back to the right, uh, it was overgrown the day I did it, so it might be like this when you're there. But head on up, you'll see the trail. It's pretty well trodden at this point. You'll also notice as you go up, the white dots start to disappear somewhere around this point. 
but from Flat Rock on up to Long Valley, it is tough. It's about two miles that goes almost straight up. Um, there's different sections of it. What it has in, in common is that it's, it's all climbing. You can see here the grade is pretty, pretty crazy. Just take your time and you should be fine. I use this as an opportunity to take a break. There's a lot of nice little big boulders to sit on where you can look at the tram, look across the valley to uh, San G, Palm Springs, and relax and refill your water, grab a bite to eat. It's a good place to fuel up. For water, go to the website. I have the whole lowdown, but I basically brought six liters, so two 1.5 liter bottles, and then I refilled at this point. After that, you have the Traverse, which is uh, kind of a narrow section, steep section. In the winter, this will be something you need crampons for, probably. Uh, keep going, you're going to get some nicer pieces of trail here that are a little more defined that aren't rock scrambles, and then eventually you'll get to Kaufman's Craig which is right there. It'll be something you've been watching as you climb up here and have seen in the distance. But at the crag, you're going to make the hard left and then do the last little bit up to Long Valley. And it's also super, super steep. So just a heads up. You can see you're sort of scrambling over these boulders. There are some places where the trail sort of splits apart and comes back together. Um, you're almost there. The trail's not that easy to lose here, so you should be okay. And the most welcome sight probably of the day will be when you reach um, Grubbs Notch, which is the entrance to Long Valley. Yeah, you'll be tired. This is where the tram comes up. You might see crowds here. Some people call it the Cactus to Crowds hike. Anyway, go out onto these wide trails. This will feel incredible after all of that climbing, this just level trail. Uh, and you make a quick right, and then another quick right onto the service trail and head over to the Long Valley Ranger Station where you pick up your permit. There's some picnic benches along the stretch too. If you wanna stop and grab a bite, you can. There is a hiker board where the tram station sort of spills out down this concrete path. Uh, you know, read any notices. They have the watch out for mountain lions stuff. That's pretty standard in Southern California. But just keep heading down here to the Ranger Station now at the ranger station, you just have to fill out a free wilderness permit. It's pretty easy. There's also bathrooms here, and there's water around the back. I wouldn't count on the water all the time, but it is there. Here's the permit. You take one copy, and you put the other copy in the box. Pretty straightforward. Once you're done, head off of here, and then continue along the trail. Now these trails are really well marked compared to the Skyline Trail, so you shouldn't have any problem here. Um, it will feel like uh, luxury after what you've just done. But keep going and follow the signs for Round Valley and San Jacinto Peak. You can see the signs are um, numerous and the trails are well-defined, so enjoy it. You have about 2,000 feet of climbing before you get to the peak here. Um, it's not too bad compared to what you did, but after what you did, it will be hard. Um, I was struggling a bit. You're also at altitude. Here's the um, Round Valley Loop. You're not going to take that. You're just going to continue towards the Round Valley Campground. Here's where the loop comes back in. Now, sometimes there's water at Round Valley. Sometimes there's not. I would um, bring all of the water you need, maybe refill, top it up at the ranger station if you want. At Round Valley, another great sign, more markings, and you're going to continue to the peak when you come down, the backs of these signs have little stickers for the tram. So if you're wasted and you don't know where you're going, just look for that tram sticker. And you come up to Wellman Divide. Um, you're going to be able to see west at this point, down to San Diego and Orange County. It's the first time you'll have this view on the way up. Uh, here you're at 9,700 feet, so it's about 1,000 more feet. Then you continue up a long stretch through some Manzanita and uh, some nice views off to the right as you go up. This section isn't too tough, uh, but again, after what you just did, it probably will feel harder than it normally does. This winds its way up until you come to the last intersection here. If you make the left, you go down to Idlewild, but you don't want to do that. So continue on up to the peak. You're going to hike up here. Um, you're going to pass the 
stone hut and then do the last little scramble up to the peak. This will be tough after what you did again, uh, but you can do it. You're almost there. And then you're at the peak. So from here, you have five and a half miles back down to the tram. Some people actually hike back down to the bottom, but I don't recommend that. When you get to the ranger station, put your copy into the permit box so they know how many people came in and out. And then head back to the concrete path uh, that you passed earlier. And this concrete path will feel like sheer hell. It's steep and there'll be people eating ice cream cones and it will drive you nuts. But this is your last stretch till you get to the tram station. Um, go to hikingguy.com for all the information on getting your tram tickets and all that jazz. But enjoy the tram ride down. And uh, there's Kaufman's Craig in the distance. And that's it. Cactus to Cloud. So go to hikingguy.com for all the info. And be careful and have fun.